lately. Um, God's been stirring me more than ever, and it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to even describe what I'd like to share. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Jim Stockman, our first year director at Beth Atlanta School of Supernatural Ministry, came into a staff meeting, and she told us, she's like, I've been listening to this podcast by this guy named Ian Clayton, and it's been rocking my world, and you know, I've heard stories here and there about people walking the kind of stuff that he's walking in, and I think sometimes I would allow myself to believe it, and sometimes I would think that's a little bit too far out there, it's a little bit too far stretched. And it's been challenging because God can do anything. You know, He calls, He gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. And the stuff I've been hearing is Company of Burning Hearts podcast. It's by Justin Abraham of Cardiff, Wales, which I really like because my ancestry is Welsh, Welsh and Irish. But, um, and I'm proud to be an American. But um, these people just believe for anything. Believe for anything. I mean, trans relocation. I mean, if, you know, one of the fundamental doctrines of Christianity is that God is omnipotent. That means he's everywhere. And if we're in him, we have access to that same thing. And he can do anything with us. He can put us anywhere. He can transport us. You know, Elijah used to catch uh, whirlwinds in a taxi cab, you know. Enoch walked in the clouds, he walked with God. Philip would just fly away somewhere else, you know. These great men in the Bible were catalysts to inspire us to burn in our generation with the crazy things, with the mystic things, with the wonderful things, with the more, with the now, with the present. And I'm just hungrier than ever to see this, to experience it. I've seen some awesome supernatural things. I've seen a lot of glory. I think about Jesus and his richness and his majesty and his goodness. It's just overwhelming at times. It's hard to articulate. It's hard to give expression to. It's hard to give language to. Um, you know, we sing that song. It's a great song called Indescribable. But he really is, man. He's really indescribable. I mean, my Jesus is everything to me. He's my best friend. He's always been there. He always will be there. And I commit to never, ever turn my back on him. To always live for Jesus. He's my King and Lord. He's my friend. He's my brother. And he's one that has eyes of fire. And he burns forever, day and night. This journey I, that I'm on kind of began um, beginning of the summer. I was at my good friend Scott Thompson's house. Um, I, I think I told the story on video recently. We were just talking about the eyes of fire, Jesus, and what that would look like if he showed up, the one mentioned in Revelation. You know, John was not a spiritual baby. He had seen Jesus, been with Jesus. He had, they, he had lived, he was with Jesus for his entire earthly ministry. He put his head on his chest. He saw all the amazing miracles that Jesus did, including being transfigured on the mountain, seeing Moses and Elijah appear before him. He saw he had a great, powerful, wonderful ministry after that. He just brought the gospel to the world, to the planet, was a father of the faith. They tried to kill him, boy him alive, exile him. You know, his last sighting was in Ephesus. A lot of people say he died in Ephesus as an old man. It's not true. There's no account of his death. But this guy was not a spiritual baby. He's not a novice. And in Revelation, it says he was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and suddenly... He turned to see the voice of the one speaking to him, and he had eyes of fire. He saw Jesus in radical, unveiled glory. And this is someone who had seen all of this other stuff, and it made him fall down as though he was dead. It was still another greater dimension, and still another place higher. And me and Scott were talking about this on his porch. And suddenly the realization of what we were talking about captured us. It captured our hearts. And it was as, it was as if that presence was there. You know, I said all the birds fly, all the trees, and all this amazing stuff. It's like, Jesus, you're in the bushes, and it's just been wrecking me for more. I want to live there. I want to live in that place. Um, da -da -da. So I'm, I'm 
over a year ago, I, I felt like we were entering the season of encounters, and I started journaling in this book, a little book I got as a gift, and I thought this would make a great book of encounters. And so I do a lot of journaling, and but this one I wanted to be specifically on supernatural encounters. I wanted it to be just a tale of the supernatural, and slowly it's getting filled, and I just set up the expectation with an empty journal and said, God, I know you're going to move in encounters. I know I'm going to see it. I, I, I was expecting to see it, expecting to see them more, and already, I mean, there's healings in here. There's metal disappearing in bodies. There's deaf ears opening. There's glory clouds. There's presence. There's fragrance, the fragrance of heaven. There's stuff you read about in Scripture. There's stuff that Scripture says is available and points towards. It doesn't mention it, but it points towards it as a guide to my own experience. You know? And with that, if that threw you for a loop, the Bible's a guide into your own relationship with Jesus. The encounters we have are going to be enhanced and verified by the, 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 the supernatural in Scripture it says this is all available. It's not going to violate scripture. Um, I am a CrossFit coach. I've done different things and I prayed about different things. And you know, I live in Newton, Georgia. I don't find any of those in the Bible. But I, I, I want to find myself in the name of Jesus. I want to find myself in His will. And in the pursuit of that, His will, those things which are good, acceptable, and perfect. I want to find that. I want to find more. You know. Justin Abraham talks a lot about Jesus talking to Nicodemus, and he wanted to tell Nicodemus the things of the heaven, of the heavens. But he couldn't even talk to him about earthly things. I mean, and Paul says, I wish to give you steak, but you're, you're still drinking milk. And, man, I want to see those deeper things. I want to see what the steak of the word really is. I wanted to see the heavenly things that Jesus talks about. And you have glimpses in it. You have, you know... Ian Clayton talks about patterns a lot, and they're all right there in the Word. The thing I mentioned in the Expect and Revival video is, is that when the church pushes out into the abyss of God, into the deep things in the ocean, just like you find amazing creatures down there that you've never seen before, they've always been there, we just didn't have the vehicle to get there. Shoka! I think the things that are coming, and this even shocked me, that they're in the Word, they're already, they've always been there, we just need the vehicle to get there. And I think one of those vehicles is expectancy. Hunger to see something that just like when you get pregnant, it's going to make you expecting. <clears throat> and I'm just saying it's crazy stuff I've never prayed for before. We were at a church just a couple of days ago when I was helping one of our papas of the house, Papa Tom, bring a word <clears throat> to our good friends, Matt and Judy's house. I was praying for a lady. I was like, you know, the wind of God is just going to begin to blow just right around you. And it was like a vortex of wind just came up just around me and the lady I was praying for right in the middle of a fire. I was like, you feel that? She's like, yeah. Some other just exacting stuff. I just want to go for it. And <clears throat> what does that do? Is that weird? Is that scriptural? Yeah, it's scriptural. I mean, it, it's we are the sons of God. We have access to everything in his arsenal of creativity, of, crea of creation. And we use all of that to bring glory to him. For bringing glory to ourselves, glory to a ministry, glory to something apart from him. Then no, if we're, if we're falling short, we need to adjust that. It doesn't mean we're heretics, but we need to adjust it and get focused. But when our focus is him and bringing him glory, you know, I, I feel like almost I'm trying to defend these encounters. There's no defense in this. It's just Jesus. And I just want more of him. I want to fly. I want to walk on water. I want to do all the crazy, amazing things that the heroes of the faith are legendary for. All of the things that the great cloud of witnesses have seen. I want to see them. I want to meet them. I want to hang out with them. I want to see the angelic more on a greater level. I mean, this is... Bible's a completely crazy supernatural comic book, man. It's an ancient comic book with real life superheroes, real life spirits, real life, you know, um, fl flaming ones, seraphs. I mean, it's all crazy, astonishing stuff that if we saw it as it really was and as it really happened, it would make, you know, superhero movies look crazy to you. You know, you got Superman creeping on me over here in the corner, but that just inspires me is a point of reference in our generation that someone dared to believe that there could be something supernatural and they made a, made a, a character out of it.
And I love these supernatural mind generation. Just like Jesus was, he set the precedent. He he levitated up into the clouds. I mean, he he never left the funeral the same way. In him was life and life more abundantly, life to explore the creation. You know, when it says for God so loved the world, a good or a friend of mine named Brian Pearl pointed out the word there is cosmos. For God so loved the cosmos, that's the entirety of creation. All creation groans, all creation, not planet Earth, not just people. All creation groans for the sons of God to be revealed. That's been my life verse for like 16 years now. All creation is waiting for you, the sons and daughters of God, to rise, to be supernatural, to um, to show creation and more. You know, my first book, Call for Revivalist, is all about that. And um, you can check that out. But just listening to the Ian Clayton stuff and the Justin Abraham stuff and the stuff they're walking in, man. It's just so much more, so much deeper. I feel like a novice. I got a treasury of knowledge, but a treasury of knowledge is just like to allow me to enter into that in a new way. So I just hope in some measure that these videos I make, <laughs> whatever this is, can inspire you for more. It's the Holy Spirit, just whoever's watching. Just let be blasted by the presence of God right now. If you need healing, just grab it. It's yours right there. 100% healing. I actually just saw a double compound fracture in an arm just snap back together and be stronger than ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Knee injuries being healed. Ankle skateboarding injuries. Um, headaches, migraines, eyesight problems, kidney problems, thorax problems, throat problems, acid reflux, uh, skin cancer being healed, obliterated. Your moles just fall off. This brand new skin, brand new skin that releases that over you in Jesus' name. Even hair falling out. I can use some of that myself. <laughs> um, just life. Just life, life, life. Just encounters. Just let the glory of, he of heaven just begin to rise on you right now in Jesus' name. Ah, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. All of the stuff just lifts up and perfects and magnifies the name of Jesus throughout the earth. And I pray that in, as you begin to encounter the presence of the supernatural, that Jesus will be magnified in you. Magnified, magnified, magnified. It's all about him. All we do, it's all about Jesus. So the glory and the presence of the fire of heaven, the power of the great I am of Yahweh, just consume you, consume you, consume you, consume you, consume you. And, um, and I, I even still have to catch up. You know, get a journal, get a fresh journal, and just expect God. It's supernatural expectancy. Expect him to do crazy, amazing things. And um, this video is already getting a bit long, but next time I'll just share some more of the encounters I tend to get to here that have just been happening lately. They seem to be happening daily now. They're happening all the time. Every day I wake up, I'm excited because I'm expecting heaven on earth. Not heaven in the future. Not, not Death isn't going to qualify me to see heaven, to see the great cloud of witnesses, to see angels. And that's another thing that Justin just keeps reiterating in his ministry. Jesus' death qualified me to see heaven, to see eternity, to see angels, to see the great cloud of witnesses. Jesus is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. So embrace, meet those saints that have gone before us, those who are alive and remain. You know, be alive. Be alive and let that life touch everything around you. You don't have to try. You don't have to do anything. Just go through your day. Practicing the presence, like Brother Lawrence says, just stay connected to heaven, and you'll watch that connection empower and bring heavenly life to everyone around you. See you guys soon.